Hi guys, welcome to today's live. Sorry we are a couple of minutes late, but uh, we had our first live stream over on Instagram and it was so fantastic that <laughs> I didn't want it to end. And I'm going, I'm sure you're going to feel that way at the end of this live. So I can't wait to share it with you. Um, of course, hello, welcome. This is Lion Brands Weekly Live Stream. I'm Sarah, for those of you who um, are just tuning in for the first time. If you are, you are in for a really big treat today because we have um, special guests. We don't get to do guests that often anymore, and I am so excited to have them. Hi, Becky. Hi, Cheryl. Hi, Ellen. Hi, Chris. Um, so today we're going to be joined um, by some of the cultural specialists from the Yakima Nation Behavioral Health Services. And these are true artisans, if I may say so myself. And we are going to learn about their basket weaving. These baskets are absolutely amazing. I can't wait to share them with you. Um, whew, I'm out of breath from getting over here. Um, if you want to share this live with anybody who might not have been able to join live, it will be wherever you are watching it right now. It's going to live on on our page. So you can check back afterwards or if you tuned in late. I mean, you're not late now, <laughs> but if you want to share it with somebody. If you want to watch it again, um, feel free to hop onto our Facebook page or our YouTube and you will um, you'll find the video. So without further ado, I am going to invite our guest in so that you guys can meet them. Hi guys, how are you? Hi. I'm gonna see if I can, oh, there we go. Now you look bigger. Hi, <laughs> you were really <laughs> tiny on the screen. Um, so this is uh, Chestina in the middle here. And as I said, she's a cultural specialist from the Na Yakima Nation Behavioral Health Services. And uh, I will let you introduce your elders or you can, they can introduce themselves. Yeah, so Shep Kachwai, Ink Mashwani Church of Sien Dominguez, Kukri Shashiak Nation Behavior Health. Um, good afternoon, my name is Shastina Dominguez. I work for Yakima Nation Behavior Health Services. I'm one of three cultural specialists. And so I'll let my elders here introduce themselves. Shep Kachwai, and I've been a cultural specialist for behavioral health for over three years. And through the teachings that uh, Justina does, we realize that behavioral health program realizes that our culture is important to the healing of um, the people that come in for help. So, um, been an enjoyable walk to bring these teachings to our people young and old. And I would like to welcome you to our version of uh, basket weaving. And uh, I believe that behavioral health offers a lot of wonderful, wonderful work and help for people and also um, the weaving is very medicinal and it could help a lot of our people help us um, yes yeah, so that's well, what we are. Um, and then I'll just let you know that we're right now we're currently sitting in the Yakima Nation Museum located in Toppenish Washington on the Yakima Nation Reservation. So what you see in the background is our beautiful museum and the exhibits here that they have to offer. And it is truly beautiful. I'm so excited. I have to thank you guys again for joining us and showing us your beautiful crafts. Um, so tell me about your, uh, your baskets and who you teach these crafts to. Yeah, so this is, um, Wapas. So these are our round baskets that we use when we do um, our, when we go 
while we're digging and we gather our traditional foods. So um, these are the ones that we use to do that. And I started teaching classes about three years ago during COVID. Uh, and the reason I started doing it was um, it was COVID, everything was shut down, everyone was isolated. So I grabbed my yarn at home and just started weaving. And I had asked our clinical supervisor, um, is this, uh, this is a really great opportunity to teach others um, through Zoom how to weave as a form of self-care and healing. So I've been teaching um, through Zoom at first and then moved into in-person. And I've taught as young as six years old all the way up to our elders who are learning. Um, and I teach Monday through Friday in the local school districts. I host um, social emotional groups within the school, um, high schoolers right now. Um, and so basically just weaving Monday through Friday. And so come Saturday and Sunday, my hands are a little sore. Um, but yeah, that's what I do uh, as my job. I love what I do. Um, and I've gained the nickname uh, either Wapus Girl or Wapus Wednesday. Um, I think it's really fun <laughs> to me out in the community like Wapus Wednesday. And so uh, it's just my new name. <laughs> I love that. That's fantastic. <laughs> And can you tell us traditionally uh, what what these wapas are used for? Am I pronouncing it correctly? You can you can correct me. Yes, yeah, wapas. You're saying so. It. What what are these used for traditionally? Uh, okay, so uh, Priscilla, our elder, she'll talk about um, how we use them uh, with traditionally. Fantastic, and I might just ask that you. Um, speak up a little bit just since we don't have the microphone there with you guys some oh. of the comments um we want to make sure everybody oh and thank you to whoever is moving the camera closer <laughs> perfect hopefully we will we will be able to hear all of you fantastic um so our people have been Food gatherers from this land from the beginning of our time, they, they say time immemorial. And um, I have a, so we practice, we have to do ceremonies before we can even go out and gather these foods. And they're healing ceremonies. And we have so much love and respect for what the Creator has given us from this land that we come from the Yakima Nation, that we don't go out and gather the foods until we have a ceremony where we, we call it a release. And we've done that with the behavior health staff because sometimes they need a healing as well. So the first food that came out was, um, we call it Indian celery, and the term we use is latit latit or kasiya. And what is the healing from it? We, they get to go outdoors. They get to see the beauty and the va vastness of our mountains. And um, we get to share a meal together. And we use these uh, wapases to put those foods in. And um, so some of the healing that we get from our releases, people that are in mourning, they've lost a loved one, but yet they want to go out and gather the foods so that they can have them when they memorialize their loved ones. So they have this release and they bring things to um, give to the people because an embrace or a handshake is medicinal and it's healing when you're in that time of sorrow. And also to celebrate our people that have, been, have never gathered in their life, and we call them new joiners. They go out and they gather for the first time. So everything we do for the first time, we give, give it away to bring us good luck with our hands and our mind. And our people have always been giving people. We, we gather foods for the ones that are sick, the ones that are in sorrow, and um, our elders that call, 
can't go out and gather anymore. We try to take care of them with these foods because our teaching is a, they're a spiritual food and they're a healing to our mind, body, and spirit when we partake of them. And so when the um, people came in and they they tell you what's in these foods now, like our bitter root is one of the first ones that we gather after the latitlatid and it's high in vitamin C. So when the um, the non-Indians, the dominant society came and to meet our people, and they had been on the ocean for a long time and they had scurvy and different things like that, our people shared our roots with them because they were high in vitamin C. And, um, and then when we get out, our staff, our different ones, when we go out there, another part of our um, healing is that we get to exercise our bodies because maybe we sit all day, eight days, five days a week. And um, so they get to exercise and they get to feel our mother earth and and they have good thoughts from when we gave those things away in the beginning. They know that they're gonna take these foods and share them with people and they feel happy in their heart and their mind and their body while they're gathering these foods. And so that's how we use these things that we, that, she, that Chestina started making and uh, the three of us are weavers because we, we want to have uh, our children and our grandchildren to be able to have these wapases for when they're gathering. So that's usually who I gave one to my daughter, to my granddaughter. I'm making another one for a granddaughter. So they'll have these things as keepsakes because I have some of these things that belong to my grandmother. And that's a part of our heritage and who we are on the Yakima Reservation because we were blessed to be one of the treaty tribes and we're going to celebrate our treaty day here coming on June 9th. So should I show you the things I have here? Um, yeah, and then just a visual like how when we go out and gather our baskets we usually have like one loop or two loops and we use a yarn belt like this um, and we just loop it through and then we tie it around our waist like a belt and so when we're gathering it's just hanging from our waist on our yarn belt. Um, and then these are some of the baskets we hear that are used with the Lion brand. Um, and so they're used with the landscape yarn, which is so beautiful. And I really, really love it. Um, and this one's made by um, Angela Sampson. This one is made by Bernie Mardell. This basket right here is Chris Polk. And then this is a bell bag. Um, and it's made by Mary Looney. And then yesterday, I wanted to make a little tiny basket as a necklace. <laughs> so um, this is some of them that are being used. And I also brought in examples of ones that are in the process. And so this is a round us that it's in the process. I just started it. And so this is kind of what it looks like on the inside before it's all finished with the top and it's done. And then I also brought a flat bag. It's like a purse. So this is one I'm working on. Both of these I'm using the bundle of love, which I really, I really love that yarn. And also using like this sparkly white yarn too. Um, so these are just what they look like before they they go and they have the tops on them. I think that's so cool. And I was saying before that I love that you're able to take these yarns that, you know, they're, they're not necessarily made from natural fibers. So they're like kind of modern in that way, but you're using them in these traditional crafts. And they look so I beautiful. A lazy Yakima because um, our ancestors <laughs> are the natural fibers that you would uh, get out in um, out in the uh, I don't want to say wild, but out in the community as far as like bitterroot, Indian hemp, um, and other reeds. They would use the really natural fibers. And now I go out and I purchase the yarn and more modern materials to make uh, the wapas or the flat bag. I don't blame you, that sounds a lot easier. <laughs> yeah, and then the topping is very different too, depending on um, the person making it. And so these two are made with buckskin, 
which is um, tanned hide from deer. Uh, and then this one, the topping on it is like a pair of jeans, which I love. I think it's like uh, a keepsake. So you can take someone's jeans and you can put them as a little topper. And this one is more like a suede. Um, and then the little one has a uh, buckskin in, on it as well. Wow. That's so amazing. Yes. <laughs> um, and can you, can you tell us how long you guys, when you learned to do this kind of weaving and um, how, how long you've been doing it for? Uh, so I've been weaving probably about six years, maybe, give or take. I don't know. Um, I grew up watching my kathla, which is my maternal grandmother. She would weave all the time when I was a little girl, and she would try to get me to weave, and I didn't want to do that. I wanted to go outside and play in the dirt. I wanted to run around. I didn't want to sit and do um, weaving. And um, not until I got older, and I really appreciated the, the art and the craft that goes into it, um, and I was really thankful that there's many um, women within our community that teach and uh, have the patience to sit and teach others. So I'm really appreciative of those ladies uh, that I got to go to their class or that they sat and talked to me and I just learned from them. And so those ladies um, from our community are Bessie Bill. I've gone to her classes before. Um, I've also uh, learned from Vivian Harrison, uh, who teaches at the um, Heritage University. And then I've also learned from Robin Pibashi, and then people from different reservations, such as uh, Kelly Palmer, um, then Leanne Campbell and Julie Edwards. So I really appreciate these women being able to sit and teach me patience and teach me new <laughs> techniques and um, how to weave um, in different styles. And so um, I don't know if you want to talk about how long you've been weaving. Um, I actually started weaving about 30 some years ago in mm -hmm. Idaho. I used to live in Fort Hall. And there were um, neighbors down the road that I would walk down and, and I didn't have a car. My husband would take the car to work. And so I just walked down to their house and they, they sat and taught me how to not only tan hides, but to uh, do basketry. And um, mm -hmm. I learned a lot from them. I started beadworking there and that's mainly what I do now is beadwork. And I've got several bags that I'm working on. I've got to finish, but, um, I, I just love to, to be busy, and I'm really fortunate right now that we, we have a wonderful boss at work, Kathleen Saluskin, that lets us do our crafts at work, and, um, and I'm just very, very happy to, to continue to, to make the different, this, this basket here is made with a different type of a weave and, um, and than these, and um, I, I just, I just mainly love to be, and I love to weave. <laughs> um, for so, tell us how long you've been weaving. I'm a kind of a new newcomer to weaving. Um, my grandkids, like she had a young man, his name was Cecil Upinet, and he just on Zoom during the COVID, he just took off with it, and now he makes hats, and he started a weaving club in school, and. And he's almost like a master weaver now. <laughs> and it's, so I guess the best time to learn is when you're young. So my grandchildren started learning. So I thought, well, I want to learn that. So I started learning, but it's only been within the last few years. And I'm not a constant weaver either. I weave in spurts. And, um, but I weave for my grandchildren so that they'll have a, something they can say that this is what my grandmother made. And so I, my first one I gave to my daughter, and that's a, a custom with our people, is the first one you give, you make, you give it to someone so that it can bring you good luck. So like your first roots that you gather, you, there's a ceremony for that. In our tribal school and different schools now, they're doing that for the young gatherers in our community when they go out and gather their first roots, they um, they all stand up and they each one they call up an elder and they give their first roots to the to an wow. elder whomever. And so their first wapas that you would make, um, I gave it to my daughter and then the second one to my oldest granddaughter. 
and my sister, she does the hats now. And I'll, I'll walk over to where those are so that you can get an idea of how much uh, weaving that our people do. But this is called a patlapa. And um, when, we, when we gather our foods and we have a feast, we wear our finest. It's a teaching we're supposed to wear new moccasins, a new dress, because that's how much we value our foods. So during that ceremony, all of the food gatherers that are carrying the food, they wear this hat in honor of the foods. And why we're honoring the foods is because the, we come from this land and these foods come from our land. And it was the promise to the creator that these foods would always be there for us if we take care of them in the way that we were taught by our elders. So we try to keep that promise and that commitment to the foods and we teach our children and we, and it, it, we find it to be true that throughout all the time immemorial, these foods are still with us. And so this is the instrument that we use. It's called a cuffin. This one was, looks like it might be deer horn or elk horn because people utilized what they had, like Justine was saying. They went out and gathered hemp and different things, and it's a long job, and you have to get that thing, hemp, and you crush it, and then you comb it, and you make a twine out of it. And so, um, but now we're all in a hurry, so we just go to the ironworks place, and we, <laughs> and, and we go to the... Um, yarn place or, and we buy everything we need but there's still a lot of people that make the old time hemp and different things and cedar root and all the other various roots and also um, the weaving is decorative this is also a bell basket here that my sister made it has um, it has feathers on it because we have a great respect for our eagle feathers and this one has, the design she has is flowers. We all love flowers and horses and things of this land. And she mentioned Julie Edwards from the Caldwell Reservation. And this is her favorite. And everyone loves now. There's a site and all kinds of things on Sasquatch, the Bigfoot. <laughs> and catch him. But um, our people do believe that he's amongst us. And uh, so I... I have that, and um, another thing that they talked about was the flat weaving. This is flat; it's not round, and um, and it's this one is made into a necklace. But we try to about things like maybe that's what her daughter made, maybe that's what her grandmother made, and um, Chestina is gifting us one of those. But this is what I I, got, I received when my grandmother passed away. It's an old time, this is called an umsh, because when you have a smaller basket, so you put the smaller roots in. But this one, she filled it eight times, she says, and so you dump them in these, the bigger ones. And then you're walking, you walked far away, and you're tired, and you put this on. And the old way, they used to, they used to carry them like this. This is the old Wow. Way. And the same with the baby boards. So these are just some of the teachings at this mat that they're sitting on. This is what they serve all those new foods on every year. This is the table. And it was also used for lodging. So everything that the creator has given us from this land, we try to use it, utilize it, respect it, and continue to take care of it and share it with our children. And we pray for it to stay here for those that are unborn too, so that they can benefit from the foods, the teachings, and keep their hand busy as well. Thank you. That's so fantastic. I, I love seeing all the different ways that you guys are utilizing these crafts. I see that you have even more beautiful baskets there. I'd love to hear about those. <laughs> this is uh, Oh. The big, um, this is the one that, uh, well, both of them. I, I use this when we dig. It's a big one, but 
it's held on with a yarn belt around your waist. And um, <laughs> it, they're still dusty because I haven't got them all cleaned out yet. But <laughs> you can. I don't know if you can see that, but like the dust came out and that's how I was laughing. <laughs> I love it. They're like, you're, they're, it's authentic. We're using them for, they're useful. They're not just for decoration. <laughs> I think we have some that are just really pretty and that we do use for decoration, but majority mm -hmm. of time, yeah, <laughs> we, we use them. And so, um, so yeah, um, I teach uh, a local class too. So if anybody's in the Yakima Valley and they want to come to a class, I teach the third Friday of every month at the Yakima Valley Museum, which is located in Yakima, Washington. Uh, I provide all the materials, so you just show up and um, come with a lot of patience and kindness for yourself as you learn a new, um, you learn to do basketry. And I always tell the participants, like, you're not learning a new craft, you're not learning a new hobby, you're remembering. Somewhere in your ancestral line, you are weavers. And so your hands are remembering. You're not learning something new, you're just remembering it. And so. Um, That's so beautiful. Yeah. Wow. I'm going to steal that. I'm going yeah. <laughs> to tell. <laughs> I'm going to tell all of the beginning stitchers that we talked to. That's that's really beautiful. That's amazing. Yeah, they're remembering. <laughs> that's fantastic. And um, as we, we reach the end here, where can our viewers follow you guys so that they can keep up and keep seeing all of these beautiful crafts that you guys make? Yeah, so if you want to follow along and you want to maybe attend a class or learn more about um, Yakima Nation Behavioral Health Services, we do have a Facebook page. So you could go ahead and find us under Yakima Nation Behavior Health. Um, we have upcoming conference that's coming up. There'll be a link for that if you would like to join us at our conference. And then we um, post other things that are going on, um, events or things about mental health on our page. So you can follow us, follow us there on Facebook. We also have an Instagram that you can follow um, for YN underscore Behavior Health. And so those are the the most public ways that you could follow us and learn about upcoming events. Fantastic. I really encourage you guys to do that. I'm definitely going to do that. I might have to fly out and take one of these yes. classes because <laughs> I'm, I'm just so in love with the things that you are creating and I would love, it looks like so much fun to do. I would love to learn how to do it. Um, so yeah. Thank you guys again for joining us. This was so amazing. And I'm seeing a lot of people in the comments who agree. And yes, we could watch this all day. <laughs> yeah. I would love for you to join us. So you need to fly out here and come to a class and bring I'm all ready. of these with you. <laughs> Fantastic. Thank you. I can't, I can't wait. Consider me consider me in. I will be there. I'll bring all you guys with me. Um, so thank you so much for joining us and for teaching us. And this was, I, I'm honored to be able to learn about, about this. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so everybody, um, I'm seeing so many thanks in the comments. Um, we will be back here next week, same time, same place. So I hope that you'll um, join me for another live stream next week. And make sure that you guys follow um, the Yakima Nation Behavioral Health uh, Instagram and Facebook and keep up with them. So thank you guys again. And thank you guys for watching. And I will see you next week. So until next time, happy stitching. Bye, guys. Bye.